Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for the first episode of our very first Patreon campaign. This is a campaign called The Rise. We are using the Cypher system in a Cypher system game called Gods of the Fall. In this game, the gods have literally fallen. Heaven, as they know it, has crashed landed into the planet. All of the gods are dead, most of the cities are ruined, and a random second moon has appeared that blots out the sun over part of the land, casting it into the Nightlands. Uh, we enter in, into this strange new world. Ready to rock and roll and see what the hell happens. That being said, if you guys like what we do here and you want to support the channel, join us on Patreon uh, for a chance to be on our one-shots, possibly other campaigns. Link for that down below. If you want to be a part of the conversation, talk about this game and all other games, link for the Discord down below. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see that there is the corruption bar. That bar serves uh, two purposes. One is when it fills, I get to fuck with them in whatever way I want. And two, we get more money to do cool stuff like make t-shirts and other fun things. So if you want to help us do that, do that. Uh... That's it. That's all I got. Over to me, the GM, because that's my job. We start with a dream. Each of you, separately, stand in utter darkness under the gaze of Nod, the one true king of the Nightlands. The city of Corso stretches out before you, its streets wending and winding like an all-too-familiar labyrinth. The city is eerily silent and completely empty, Something you've never seen before. The feeling is strange. It feels like being watched, being pursued. A chill runs down your spine. Casting your gaze to the darkened, uh, darkened sky, the massive moon hangs low. You watch in horror as cracks form along its equator, pieces falling through the aether. Dread washes over you. This must be what your elders felt in the time of the fall of a lantern. Your muscles tense as you sprint through the abandoned city, destruction all around you. The wrenching and cracking from the moon draws your attention uh, and your gaze. Where once hung a moon that blocked the sun, now a great red eye fixed on you. Bathing the city in a sickening red glow. Shadows twist and writhe and seem to come alive as you continue to run, but to where? Something beckons you forward. The west? Why? There's something ahead. Is that a light? As you break through rows and rows of dilapidated buildings, before you stands a large ruined keep, bathed in a pale green light. Vines grow forth from inside, wrapping around columns and pillars, ensconcing the walls and rosebuds and flowers and, and different flora you've never seen before. The red light dims, and the flowers bloom as you stride forward into this keep. You wake up. Corax, you wake up. Who are you? Where are you? And what were you doing when this dream took you? So Corax is a um, relatively short gentleman of about 5'2", quite a slender um, guy, red hair. Um, always in his green cloak, uh, which... You can't see, but has many, many pockets. Um, generally basic clothing. He is in the city. Um, and he was probably hiding out from nefarious activities he may or may not have committed from the day before. Where were you hiding out? Um, probably on the rooftops in a spot that is covered um, where a couple of rooftops meet. Are you in the city of Corso? Yes, okay. he would be in the city. Interesting. Okay, so you kind of wake. It's 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 early morning, right? It's it's still it's still as it always is in the city of Corso. Dark. You are smack dab in the center of the Nightlands, in what people are now calling the capital of the Nightlands. It is perpetual darkness, despite you being fairly sure it's a it's appropriately morning time, or at least. You've slept enough to feel like it's morning time. You are still bathed in darkness. So the familiarity of your dream sort of sits with you and you can look up to see Nod kind of glowing. Not red, not cracked, not a sightless eye watching over you. But as you kind of take your breath and relax from whatever that strange dream was, 
you kind of cast your eyes to the west and the camera kind of follows your gaze. Um, Octavia, you also awake from the same strange dream. Where are you? Who are you? And what were you doing before you woke up from this dream? Octavia is about 20-ish. She stands about 5'4", um, long red hair. She would definitely be hanging out in the garden that she had found um, probably about a week before. It, uh, <clears throat> it has this very large blossoming tree in the middle and it just kind of felt like home. And so now she sleeps in the tree and she's made it her little home. Are you would, also in Corso? Uh, Corso? Yes, it would be Interesting. somewhere in Corso. Interesting. Uh, which is extremely rare for any kind of um, flora to grow at all in Corso. There is no sun here to encourage the growth of these things. Uh, there is a special place where magic is used to uh, basically form glow, uh, like grow lamps um, so that they can still have crops in the nightlands. But this is not that. So the fact that there is a tree here that is not dead or warped or twisted in itself is a sight to behold. Perhaps this tree exists inside the ruins of some building that you might be the first one to discover. But as you wake up and you can see through the the cracks of the ceiling, of the roof of this decrepit building that you are hidden away in, in your secret garden. You can look up and you too can see that Nod still hovers low in the sky, not cracked, not splintered, no red eye staring down at you. But you can't help but feel like that dream was all too real. And as you also kind of get your bearings and rub the sleep from your eyes. You kind of look to the west and the camera follows your view. Uh, I'm going to mess this up, Snow. Mina? Mina's fine. Mina? Okay. Is that, what is it supposed to be? Mina. Mina. Okay. Uh, so you also wake up. Same question. Yeah. Who are you? Where are you? And what were you doing before this dream took you? So Mina is probably in uh, a cheap accommodation somewhere, a tavern. Uh, he arrived last night into Corso with, uh, a, as a caravan guard. Um, so they probably had accommodations booked as a final night. Um, he wouldn't have partaken of the referees very much, but he would have been a part of them. Um, so he would have found cheap accommodation there. Um, he's got short auburn hair. Uh, he's tall and leaf, so um, he would be he would be wide awake at this time in the morning. It was probably actually un it was unlike him to have slept in as much as he did, um, which is probably just as shocking as the dream. Okay, you wake up in this unpleasant accommodation, right? It's not it's it's cheap. It's low. It's low quality. It's not. You're not in low corso. You're not in like the bad part of town. You're actually in the docks. Um, you're staying in a tavern in split kind of thing um, called the Carrick. The Carrick is a large um, ship, basically, but on land. Um, it is made to look like a large ship. Perhaps it was a large ship. And that is where your caravan had ended, taking their goods to the docks to be sold wherever they are sold. Uh, whatever those goods may have been. And so, as such, the closest place to sleep would be the Carrick, and there is where they bought cheap lodging. That is your home until you find a new job, a new caravan, whatever it is. But again, even though you're sleeping a little bit later than you anticipated, this dream sort of lingers in the back of your mind, and you can't help but think of the great red eye. It's incredibly strange you something about the west something about growing plant life in corso which is you've been back and forth here that's impossible nothing grows here it's dead everything's dead and still you can't help but think about it and your head kind of turns and your vision is cast to the west 
and the camera follows it down. And Sadlitz, the oldest member of our group, where are you, who are you, and what were you doing before this dream took you? Sadlitz was probably sitting in the back of his favorite tavern in Samara, a city up to the north on the edge of the Nightlands, kind of feet up, probably nodded off, waiting for his next job. Um, when he wakes up, more like he's probably still there, looks around, if no, no, checks if anyone's approached him at all. If not, he probably just goes back to just kind of laying there. Okay. Uh, same, same kind of thing. You are woken from sleep. This dream sort of hangs in the back of your mind to call, you know, it was Corso. Whether you've ever been there or not, you felt familiar. You knew the streets, you knew where you were running to. And even though you try to tip that hat down, kick those boots back up and sort of relax back into that old man sleep, uh, you can't help but think of Corso and what that could mean, and why you had that dream. This is not the first time you will have... Oh, this is, this is not the only time you all will have had this dream. We'll do a little montage here, because I love the 80s, and why wouldn't we? Over the course of several weeks, you each have this dream a few more times. It varies for each one of you. Whatever it is compels you to stay and or go, in Sadlet's case, to Corso, leaving the comfort of Samara behind you, leaving the familiar faces that hire you for jobs to hunt large game or the occasional goblin or, or, or something of the like to, to protect a city. Uh, Mina, you've seen caravans go there's been opportunities for you to join them, but whatever it is, you can't take that final step and actually leave. Something is sticking with you. Something wants you to stay here. Octavia, same for you. The comfort of your secret garden is somewhat diminished. It is the safest place you feel in Corso, the strange as it is. But even there, even in your... Sancta Sanctorum. You don't feel as safe as you did before you had that dream. Corex, this is almost a calling. Out of anyone, I feel like you would be the most excited about this. This is one of the strangest things to ever happen to you. The first of which set you on your path to begin with. This being likely the second super strange thing that has ever happened to you. You are under no compulsion to stay in Corso, but I feel like you want to. You want to figure out what this is. And so, we pass through several... Sunsets and sunrises outside of the Nightlands. We pass through lamp lightings. Um, we pass through revelries that are happening in Corso. Um, and as you all know who have been there before, the revelries, though they sound fun, are usually not for the faint of heart. They're not the kinds of parties you'd like to be involved in or invited to, no matter what part of town they're in. But we see days transition into weeks as you all have been in Corso, Sadlitz arrives, finds appropriate lodging. And for whatever reason, perhaps fate, you all find yourself in various corners of a small dockside inn called the Carrick. Again, this is a large ship. Uh, it is on land. It is on, you know, stilts. There is a plank down from the inside uh, that you can kind of enter in. There is uh, warm fish soup stews, a fish head di dinner. There are some bitter whiskeys. There are some uh, foul wines and some strange smelling beers that exist here. This is a low-brow establishment 
for people who don't have too much money or too much taste here in the docks. The docks are outside the market, thus it is a common stopping ground for any traveler or visitor to Corso. But for whatever reason, the four of you are here at the Carrick. Whether you were drawn here, wandered in accidentally, you're here. What are each of you doing in this tavern? Whether it's the first time, second time, fourth time you've been here, what are you doing now as you sit? I think Mina has probably been staying here the whole time. And um, he's picking up odd jobs um, for tailoring and mending clothes. Um, he's probably um, bartered for his accommodation and meals by doing tailoring repairs for the innkeeper, um, as well as wandering through the markets to find anyone that might have extra jobs for him. So he'll be in a back corner that's well lit. He'll have his shield that looks like a large button and his um, weapon, which is looks like a large sewing needle from a theatrical prop, maybe, uh, kind of propped up near the table to kind of show what his, his job is, to let people know that he's open for business. So he's just quietly working through some tailoring jobs. Okay, everyone else, what are you guys doing? Aylitz has probably found the opposite corner in the dark side of the back, the dark back corner and kind of sit his up, sat back, put his boots up, probably commenting on how the beer here is terrible. And probably just keeping an eye on the left hand kind of hovering over his cavalry sayer because he doesn't trust anyone because he actually hates this town. He knows reasonable amount of, about Corso, and he hates this place. Say, let's, you sit there uh, in your in your chair. Um, you come from Samara, a different place than Corso, still dark, still under the Nightlands. You can't help but notice. Perhaps it's because of your family members. Perhaps it's because of. You know, who you grew up around, but you can't help but notice that there is a a fine-looking tailor in the corner, hawking his wares, and being as jovial as he can be, given the conditions of where you're staying and the general conditions of the Nightlands themselves. He just catches your eye. You see him kind of over there, parsing his wares, as you kind of rock back into your chair and sip that foul-smelling beer. Uh, Korax, Octavia, what are you guys up to? Octavia would probably be sitting at the bar, <clears throat> trying to chat up the bartender. Hanging out and just trying to make conversation. The bartender, as you have come to know, is a gruff, curt fellow who only likes to be referred to as the captain. You have, because of your chatty nature, you have discussed with several patrons, and the rumor is, for whatever reason, you've seen no evidence, but the rumor is, this man is half a fish. He is half fish, half man. Several people have confirmed this rumor, but you've never seen it. That being said... Corex, what are you doing? Corex um, would be wandering around the bar for the most part um, with a drink that he's had the one for most of the day or this time in the bar, trying to listen to stories that people are telling um, because he's had this crazy recurring dream. Um, has anyone else just to see if this is a common occurrence um, and find out if there's anything strange that people know that's going on. Okay. So you kind of, are you just moving from table to table? Anyone who will allow you to sit down with you? He wouldn't sit. He would just walk and stand next to a table and listen. And if yeah. they're telling anything interesting, hang around. If not, move on to the next one and yeah. just keep just moving around the bar. Just being extra creepy, right? 
perfect, perfect. So, you do this, you kind of mill about. There's a few moments where you two stand by Octavia and you hear uh, her discussing with another patron or perhaps trying to have a conversation with the captain, this mysterious barkeep. Um, you've also heard the rumors that he is half fish. Although, again, you've never seen fins or a tail or scales. Um, it does smell a little fishy, but you're on the docks. You're on the ocean. What doesn't smell fishy? You've stood next to uh, Mina's um, little booth, essentially, right? Uh, there's been people coming in and out. You've heard tales of, of Mina's travels, um, you know, every once in a while. Um, and you've stood by Sadlitz, who I can only assume you've heard a few coarse grunts from, a sip of beer, an errant snore, and the grumbles of a man who doesn't feel like dealing with anyone's shit. It's a routine day, night, it's all the same for you guys. You're here, you're chatting, you're selling wares, you're pretending not to be here, you're listening to stories. All of you see a man walk in. Kind of like a... This might not be a reference for everybody, but he kind of cramers into the door where he kind of like slides in and looks a little disheveled, right? Like he doesn't just walk in to this, like a normal patron. And those of you who've been here for a few days, Mina especially, you've never seen this guy before. The majority of people here are regulars or they look like travelers. This guy doesn't look like a traveler. He looks like he's been traveled on. Um, he looks a little disheveled. His, his clothing is a little bit worse for the wear. You see, you, especially you, see a few tears in his garments, um, perhaps from a tussle, perhaps they were caught on something and it just pulled, right? You're not entirely sure, but this is not the, the wear and tear of a traveler. This is a little bit more abuse than normal. He's, he's, uh, he's an older gentleman. He's probably in his, if you had to guess, uh, early 50s, maybe, maybe, you know, late 50s, maybe, maybe, maybe mid 50s. Um, but he kind of stumbles in and you can see even he's just standing like four or five feet in the doorway and he's looking, he's looking around for someone you would assume. And as soon as he locks eyes on the red hair of Corex, he beelines directly for him. You all can see him, like, look, 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 and then he sees, you see his eyes go a little bit wide, and he just straight towards Corex. Corex, where are you in the bar at this moment? I feel he would be um, not at the bar itself, probably mm -hmm. midway towards the door, but one, off to one of the sides. Okay. Yeah, so he sees you as you're probably, like, you know, kind of tilting an ear in to listen to uh, the stories of a, of a traveler who had, had you know, blown in. Um, and he, he moves up to you very close and sort of, like, puts hands on you and pulls you close to him. Like, he grabs you. He says, you, I, 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 need, I need your help. I need your help. Um, I, I need you and the, and the, and the other redeemers. Where, where, are, where are your friends? Um, what friends? The, I don't have friends. There's four of you. Where are the other three? He looks around the bar. Do you know what they look like? Because I don't have any friends. Ah, uh, yes. There's an older gentleman. Uh, he's he's gray of he gray of hair, gray of beard. Um, he he, uh, oh God, what was it? He carries a he carries a, a bow a, a bow and arrow, a crossbow. He carries something like that. There's a um a young girl. Uh, she has hair like yours. Um, uh, a, 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 a pretty talkative. Uh, and there's a there's a another young man. Your your age, I think. Uh, quiet, um, something about, uh, something about a button? Do you know any of these people? Please help me. I need all four of you. You are the redeemers. I need your help. I need your help. Um, I, I know at least two of the people you speak of. Um, he would look across to, to Mina, who's sitting in a corner in a booth, um, he kind of like he like kind of grabs you and is is attempting to pull you towards uh, Mina unless you stop him. 
Korax isn't very strong. I'm assuming it's just going to be a... Yeah, see, it's, it's very, like, it's kind of catches you off guard. So if you're not ready for it, he's kind of yanking you. And you're being, like you said, you were by the door, and this is across the room at this point. So he's kind of, like, pulling you through. And, like, you're... A few patrons are kind of, like... Right? It's to the point where even even Sadlitz, who is in his, you know, his typical beer in hand, half asleep, uh, or pretending to be asleep, right? Uh, his best Aragorn, as he kind of tips the hat up. And even you can see this strange display of a man, a few years your senior probably, dragging this young boy across the tavern towards the tailor. Um, clearly, from what you can see, the old man does, in fact, need a tailor. But um, he drags you across... Sir, 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 sir. And he's like, puts his hands down on the table, Mina. I, I, I need your help. Please. Um, I, I need all of you. All four of you. The, the, I, I, was, I was sent to find the Redeemers. I found, I found this young man. I found you. There's a girl and there's an older man. I, I need all of you. You're, I need you to save the afterworld. Um, I'm just a tailor. I don't think I can save the afterworld, but I can certainly help you with your clothing. No, of, of course you can save the afterworld. You're divine. And as soon as that word leaves his lips... You hear a few, oh, voices kind of hush around you and faces absolutely turn towards the booth. Yeah. Korax uh, backs away slowly. <laughs> okay. Thanks for dropping this hot mess in my lap. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, there's no divinity here. No, there's no divinity left in the world. Uh, you, you're mistaken. Um, maybe a, a hot meal and a drink. Um, uh, take a seat at, the, uh, at my table and I'll, I'll arrange no, it. No, no, you don't understand. This was foretold. This was foretold. There was a vision. Um, I, I, was, I was told, I, I, can't, I can't go into much detail, but I was told the four of you can bring the light to the afterworld. The four of you. He, and he like reaches back and sees that you're like a, a few steps away, Korax, and he goes to grab for you. There was another one. You said you found two. Where was the second one? Um, the, the talkative ladies at the bar. But, um, when you say vision, of what? I, I, I don't I don't know the specifics. I, I didn't I didn't have it. I didn't have the vision. It wasn't it wasn't me. Someone else had it. They told me. Cor- Corax is intrigued but concerned. Um, they 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 told me to find you. Who's they? I, for their safety, I can't tell you. But if you come with me, I can show you. He, like, eyes Mina. Um, it it, it I, has to be all four of you. I think I, I, we should uh, humor him because uh, I, I don't like what he's saying. I, I, I don't know if we'll survive if it's not all four of you. It has to be all four of you. We need the fourth one. What did you say the fourth one looks like? Um, he's he's uh, an older man, like myself. Uh, he, he has a, a bow or a crossbow. He has, he has a, a large weapon. Um... And, and the girl, the girl, and he like leaves the two of you standing, like lets go of you, Korax, and he moves towards Octavia at the bar. Um, and Octavia, I feel like a, a, a young girl of your age uh, in this seedy bar in Corso, which is not the best place, is you're a little bit used to weird people in general just coming up to you. Um, usually not for good reasons, um, but this man sort of comes up very close to you. Miss, miss. And he's like whispering, like hot in your ear. Miss, I need, don't be alarmed. I need your help. The, the others, the other redeemers, they, they told me where you were. And I, I need your help. I, it's, it's, it's about. And he like looks at the captain and kind of, kind of like leans in again. It's about the divine. Cool. Uh, Octavia would definitely give him a look that just meant shut up and she would try and walk away from him and not say anything uh as soon as you like get up you notice that there's like disgruntled patrons uh you who is is very observant in that manner and you see them like looking back and forth and looking at you and looking at him and looking at the other two in the corner uh, that you saw him uh, accosting, basically. And they get up, leaving food, drink on the table, and they leave the tavern. He, he looks to you and says, no, 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 no. You... I'm sorry. I, I, need your, I need your help. 
For what? I can't say any. I can't say any more here. I don't know you. Go away. I, I don't. I, I know you don't know me. Um, my name is Dreshin. I, I, I mean you no harm. I need your help. I was sent to find you. By who? I can't tell you. Well, that's not happening then. I can't tell you here. And you can see more people are, like, paying attention to the situation. Uh, Corax and Mina, you see this exchange happening for whatever that's worth. Yeah, I think Mina will, will step towards them, um, thinking that Octavia is probably in need of a bit of assistance. Um, and just say, um, good sir, I think uh, I, th I think you might have the wrong people. There's there's no one here. I'm a, I'm a repairer, not a redeemer. Um, no, there's, no. And there's there's not even four of us. No, there is there is four of you. I I, I promise. The, the, she had a vision, and, and she sent me. She gave me descriptions of each of you. And as far as I know, this matches the description. I, there's one more. I, I I promise you. I promise you. And we need your help. We need the help of the divine. And that. And he like, kind of nods towards the two of you who are standing there. All this. All this happening, Sadlitz has shifted his hands. He's now firmly grasping his saber mm -hmm. on his hip, and he's discreetly tucked away his crossbow. Okay. Okay. Korax, once um, Mina has left, would have got up and walked up to the person who had the biggest weapon in the bar that he had seen as he was wandering around, which I'm assuming is Sadlitz. Mm. Or would it have not have been? I feel An like... An old man as well. I mean, I feel like Mina has the biggest weapon in the tavern in the most visible way, but you've already seen him, and it doesn't match the description given by Dreshin. Um, so if, say, let's, is your, your crossbow, is, it's a sizable crossbow, I assume. It's not like a little tiny guy. It hasn't been visible a, for the most part? It's a decent medium-sized crossbow. Yeah. It was visible at first. It's not visible now. Okay. Um, other than that, he would have seen his cavalry saber, which is just normal size yeah. cavalry saber. Nothing substantial. Sure. Yeah, I think, Korax, if you've been here a while, and Sadlitz, you've been here, it's, you know, it's been days for at least each of you, right? Uh, you probably would have seen Sadlitz with his crossbow. At least come in with it slung, tuck it behind a jacket kind of thing. Like, you've seen it before. Uh, so you can move over to him. He sits in the same spot in the bar every day. Yeah, he, he would walk over... Um... The crazy guy's looking for redeemers. Are you a redeemer? He said there's supposed to be four of us. I know it's three of the people he described. You're old and you carry a big weapon. Those are the only descriptions of items he gave me. Well, then his describers are either inaccurate or he's just trying to be insulting. <laughs> uh, nope, I have <laughs> no idea who this redeemer business is and I don't do jobs if I don't get paid. So, buzz off. Okay. It's not you then. And he would turn or walk back towards the bar where this crazy dude is. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see him talking to Mina and Octavia. Um, we'll say that kind of happened while, you know, uh, Mina was converging in this conversation. So you can kind of get back to the group. If you're going towards these three, uh, you can get there as Mina finishes speaking, um, saying that this man is confused. No, no, no. I, I, I swear. I swear. I it's it's not safe it's not safe here I, I and i can't be gone for too long but but she had a vision and she gave me a description of all four of you you're the redeemers of the afterworld um i i i can't say that what you're saying is correct but um if it's not safe here i'm i'm willing to walk you home i'm willing to uh, escort you he like his eyes shift to the door and then back to you uh, yes, yes, I, I, w I would like a, a walk home. Yes. Uh, okay. And without, without even having to roll, you can tell that he's not walking home. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, I will show you where my home is, uh, which is exactly where I want you to go, my home. Yeah. Um... But there's a fourth, there's a fourth. Young man, and he like grabs on on Corax again. Now that you've kind of arrived, there's there's one more. Uh, he he has a he's a, he's a hat. Um, he has a hat. He has, shit. I wish I wrote this down. Um, he's like, old. He has a beard. He has gray hair. A hat. A a, 
a, a ranged weapon of some kind, a crossbow, a longbow, a, a something. Um, Does he have a fancy sword? I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't remember anything about a fancy sword. I, I, I couldn't write it down in case someone found me. Um, he would point out Silas. That kind of matches the description, but he says he's not a redeemer. So of all of you, but you are. You clearly are. <laughs> <laughs> so you say. That's the best re- <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Jesus fuck Christ. Um, hey, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, he like kind of bull rushes through you guys, leaving the three of you there in a confused group of people. Um, and, uh, he, he walks over to Sadlitz, um, and he like crouches down, right? Like next to your chair. Um, like you can clearly see this is a person in need, right? Sir, sir, I understand that the the red haired boy spoke to you. I, I need your help. I, I was sent here to find you. Um, and you can see every time he looks around, more people, the, the, I, their heads just sort of follow this guy wherever he goes. The whole tavern is paying attention to what's happening right now. This has to do with the divine, the return of the divine. You're, you're, I, I, think, I think you're one of them. You're one of the redeemers of the afterworld. We need your help. If, if I don't come back with all four of you, I don't think there's any way that we can make it. Redeem a bit. Divine, what does that even mean? I, I, I mean, it, it. as far as I understand it, it means exactly what you think it means. Oh, that were gods in the flesh? Yeah, right. Uh, I, I don't I, have any business with you. You don't, don't know who I am. I don't, you're right. I was sent to find you. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you're a god in the flesh, but I think you're meant to save a divine being, I, I think. I was told to find you, that, that you would help, that, that the four of you could help. I only do things if I get paid for it. So how much are you willing to offer? Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have much. I, I, I can see what we have. Uh, I can see what we have back at the keep, and you can have whatever is left. No, 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 that's not how this works. I get payment up, I get half payment up front. I don't do jobs without it. He, like, moves his jacket, and you can see that this man, he's, he, like, reaches into a pocket, and he drops, like, uh, I think it's, I think they're called stars, which is, like, the lowest currency. He drops, like, a, like a small pile of, this is all I have on me. If, if you come back to the keep, we'll put whatever we have together, and you can have all of it. I don't care. Money's not important. <sighs> this is pathetic. Uh, Fine. But I'm holding you to it. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, got, yeah. I'm charging you double. Okay, you can have everything. You have whatever we want. You t- take the keep. Uh, <laughs> and, and he like looks back, and like as soon as you start to like get up, kind of, he like looks, he stands and looks back to everyone else. Come on. Uh, Nina will head straight to them um, and say, "I'm ready. To, let's let's take you home. Let's uh, let's get you safe." Yes, yes, I need, I need, I need everyone. Karax is coming with. Um, <clears throat> when Mina says, "Yeah, we'll take you home," he's like, "But it could be a fun adventure." I mean, it's, it's better than this shit all. <laughs> this, this is yeah, more fun than I, uh, uh, This is more fun than I'm used to um, already. But um, I, I'd rather see him home safe. I think uh, he uh, he um, may need some assistance. Uh, Octavia, do you also follow, or are you resolute in your position here? Octavia, being the young woman that she is, not only a young woman, but the only young woman that this man has approached, yeah, not knowing the other members, she would not go. She would sit at the bar and wait for them to leave. Uh, so as, as Korax and Mina join Sadlitz, he sees you return to the bar. And again, he, right across the bar, and all of the eyes rotate toward, like, back and forth between what the fuck is going on here? And he comes, please, please, I need your help. I need your help. This is a matter of the divine. And he's getting louder now. And you see more patrons are leaving. He is drawing attention, even more so. 
what did you not understand? I don't know you. Go away. It's, it's not a matter of knowing me. It's life or death. I need your help. If we don't have all four of you, we could all die. That's what I was told. Will you shut up if I go? Yes, I, I won't talk the rest of the way. Fine. Don't come near me. Okay. And he, like, takes a few steps back. And I would probably stand at the back of the group. He, as soon as, like, as soon as you seem like you're kind of going with him, or, or going with the group, he, like, looks back and, like, and doesn't open his mouth uh, as he kind of waves everyone along. Um, you have now formed the strangest, most reluctant party to ever exist in the history of me running this game. Um, he leads you out of the Carrick uh, and through the streets of the docks. Um, roll me... Uh, any one of you can roll me an intelligence check. Uh, the difficulty is going to be four. If you have any kind of survival or perhaps observation skills, uh, let me know, and that can that can possibly knock it down. I'm not going to be the best one to roll intelligence checks. Okay. Is this to do with what he's doing or saying? Uh, it's it's more to do with where he's leading you. So, like, uh, Sadlitz, you have uh, navigation. You could roll navigation. That would help you. Um, so if you want, on, on the next to your skill navigation, there should be a dice. You can click on that. Actually, you have an inability in navigation. You're terrible at navigating. Uh, so, yeah, you can still do that, too, because you're actually bad at navigating. Um, so you would roll that inability at a bad difficulty navigate. four. Um, let's see. Octavia, you don't have any uh, directional-based things. Um... Mm -hmm. Let's see. Discerning here. true motives or seeing through something rather. Mm, just true motives or seeing through lies. Interesting. If I mean, you can you can roll lies. that to see if you feel like he's lying. Um, if you that's like a uh, actually you have an inability in that that I right next to that is you're bad at that. You're bad at telling people. Oh, bad at that. You're bad at telling people <laughs> if they're lying. I think. Oh, perfect. Oh no, you're trained in it. Sorry, I'm wrong. I can't read. Uh, so yeah, you are trained in that, uh, which means you can you can roll that if you'd like. Uh, to see if you believe this guy. Um, and that would also be an intellect uh, difficulty for. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mina, do you have any social interactions, narrative? Nope, nope. Nobody has anything useful except for Mr. Sadlitz. Oh, no! No. Necro, that's a one. That okay. is one. Cool. So, oh, the fun boy. part, this is everyone's first time playing Cypher, I believe. The fun part about mm -hmm. Cypher System is two things. One, when you roll a natural one, I get to intervene for freezies. The other fun part is, I can also intervene whenever the fuck I want. Uh, but, to do so, I have to give you an experience point. Experience points in this game can be used to level up, but also to be used to re-roll. Or do other bullshit that you try to sell me, and I say, sure, but it costs one XP. So, this is one of those times, but now it is free. Those of you who are traveled, I think at least, I think I would say all of you. You are walking through the docks, you are walking through the streets. This man is as silent as he can be because Octavia said she wouldn't come if he opened his mouth. Uh, so he is miming directions, and he's kind of leading you and looking back frantically. And he looks back one of the times, and you see him stop, and his eyes go very wide. And he opens his mouth and looks directly at Octavia, who is the last person, and says, We have to go now. And he's looking past you. And as you all kind of look behind you, you can see that a good hundred or so feet is three reconcilers who are walking down the street. Now in this game, if you're not aware, reconcilers are not good. Uh, they uh, collect things that might have to do with the divine, or they make divine things disappear. You have drawn attention, or at least this Dreshen man has. Maybe these reconcilers are following you. You're not sure, but they do seem to be walking in the same direction as you. And he looks panicked. And he begins to 
hurry the rest of you along as he quickens his pace uh, towards wherever the hell he's going. Uh, Sadlitz, your navigation skills elude you as you are better in the forest than you are in the city. Uh, but you guys continue down these wending and winding uh, pathways through the city streets. Um, again, everything begins to look uh, the same after a while in the docks. You pass through the markets and you pass through into Low Corso, uh, a fairly grimy, gritty place. Low Corso is like that scene in Sin City where they go into Old Town and the cops turn around. In this city, you can buy basically a ticket to commit crime. Usually, if you don't have one, they're called indulgences. Usually, if you don't have one, the reconcilers come and they give you what for. But there's so much going on in the rest of the city that if you don't have an indulgence in in Low Corso, no one really cares. That's the kind of place you're being led to. As you continue along the streets, he is carefully taking back alleys, ducking under things. What are the four of you, who are relatively close enough together, what are you doing? What are you talking about, if anything, as you make your way across the city of Corso? Octavia is trying to keep to herself, Mm -hmm. and if the others tried to get close to her or talk to her, she would very obviously move away from them. Well, that doesn't look good. Uh, I think so. Be for a quiet day. I think Mina would probably be trying to strike up a conversation with Corex as being the other uh, more socially uh, open person in the group um, and introduce himself and. Um, Probably even inspect Corax's uh, clothes for any requirements of repairing and pointing out anything you could do to help. Yeah. Cor- Corax, as they ducked into the first alley from the reconcilers, would have his hood up to try and hide the fact that his hair stands out. Mm. Um, and yeah, would be chatting away with, with Mina about life, but he would be trying to make pace as well. Um, to stay as far ahead of those reconcilers as possible. Yeah, that's a good call. They're not they're not the friendly type. Um, so as you guys have a little bit of small talk, uh, the two of you being good Samaritans, the other two kind of against your will um, being dragged along the way for whatever this farce could be, because you're not divine, that's ridiculous. You continue down these dark streets, the lamps kind of flicker, this, this, this oil lamp kind of flickers around you, um, and do you all have a familiar sense kind of wash over you as you feel like you've been here before? Perhaps you have. Three of you have lived in the city for some time. And perhaps this, the streets all do look the same after a while. But say, let's even you feel like you've been here before and you've never been here. You all realize roughly the same time. You're heading west through Corso. You continue down the side streets. The man is kind of hurrying along, dipping, ducking, leaning back, looking, and wordlessly motioning back. The only words he had said the entire time was, we have to go, unless someone tries to engage him. But eventually, the city streets and these buildings give way to a clearing. There you see the massive wall that surrounds all of Corso. And against it, directly in front of you, is a much lower wall, to which there are two ruffian guards. Um, They're not like in any kind of uniform, they look like street thugs. And which you can see through the opened gate, a keep, not covered in vines or flowers, but it is a keep that each one of you recognizes. And as soon as the keep is in view, he turns back and says, We have to hurry! Inside! Inside! And he points towards the gate that is lowered. Or, yeah, lowered. And he runs across this opening. And you can see him, like, talking hurriedly to the the two guards there. And he points back to the four of you. And the two guards begin, like, wrenching this, this, this gear upward to raise this portcullis 
of this thing. Um, and he, come on, come on, please. And he's shouting across this, this opening. Corax Ma- would... Derp- no, I was just going to say, Mina will hurry across, um, anxious to see this guy home. Corax will pull his cloak in, hold on to objects within, and he would run to get through that gate. Okay. Say let's Octavia. Octavia would definitely very begrudgingly hurry and try and keep up. Okay. Say let's Well, I try to I'm going to be quick about it, but I'm in no rush. Okay. Uh, you are, uh, by this man's definition, an older man. So in your 38 years, you are clearly elderly. Um, <laughs> so you, you kind of casually get across here, and he ushers all of you inside. And as soon as Sadlitz makes his way inside, you hear the click, 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 as the, the gear spins and the chains rattle as the portcullis closes. This way, this way. And he points. And now that you are inside the small walled keep, you see the greater keep before you. Each one of you recognize this keep. This is identical to the keep from your dreams, minus the vines, the green glowing light, the warmth, or the flowers that spring up at your steps. This is a ruined, dilapidated keep. There is a small outbuilding to your right. The ceiling is low, kind of caved in in some places. There is a well. There are two guards around the well, Um, there's another small building towards the back. The roof is caved in in several places. You can see there are cracks in the walls, a small rickety staircase that leads up to the top of the walls. No one is on these, the parapets here. Uh, you see that there is some some movement happening inside the keep itself, but all of the people that you see here look even worse for wear than Dreshen himself. This is ragtag at its finest. Um, this keep has none of the grandeur that it had in your dreams. This is abandoned, forgotten, unwanted. This is a hiding place. And he begins to usher you towards the door. And as soon as the door opens, he runs through. Um, Like, he's leading you, but you can see that he's in a hurry to get there. Like, he's not even looking back anymore. He just assumes you're coming, throws a hand over the shoulder, and he is running through this keep. The four of you kind of congregate at the door... This is the first chance you've had to, like, rest for a second. The reconcilers are not here. What do you guys do before you follow? Nina will kind of whisper to Corex, um, I've got the weirdest sense of deja vu right now. Corex looks back up at the building. So do I, as he walks along just brushing his hand along the, the walls. I I feel like I've been here. Yeah. But not like but, this. Yeah, but here, but yeah, definitely not like this. Hey, let's look around and takes in the whole surrounding. Recognizing the weird sense of deja vu as well, but not audibly saying it. He's just kind of like looking around, taking in every detail. Octavia? Octavia would probably turn to Mina and say, I've had a dream about this place, but it didn't look like this. It, it was a dream. It was in a dream. Yeah, but there was, there was much more, it was much more beautiful. It wasn't this decrepit. I've seen this, I've seen this in my dreams and I, I can't shake that dream. I've been having it over and over. But we, we, this is, we can't be divine. This is, it's a coincidence. Octavia, at him saying that he's had this dream over and over would definitely start to freak out just a little bit inside. And over, at, like, how, how many times have you had this dream? I've, I've been in the, I've been in Corso for weeks, and I've have it, had it ever since I arrived. 
three, maybe four weeks. How can, how can we have the same dream? Because I, it, it's exactly like that. It's, it's beautiful and, and, and grown with vines and it looks just almost pristine. And this is disgusting, but how, how would you be able to have the same dream as me? That's not possible. It's, maybe it's a maybe it's a trap. Uh, someone's trying to lure us here. I don't know. As soon as Mina says he thinks it's a trap, say this will pipe. I was like, I think so too. You would look ahead, and Karax has been walking, in, just oblivious, checking out the walls, and at the the building itself. But he didn't stop. He just kept slowly walking, in a daze. Um, yeah, at the kind of confirmation that Sadelitz mentions that he thinks it's a trap as well. Me and you will hurry forward to Corax to try to try to um, alert him as well. Um, but he's the crazy dude. He went through. If it was a trap, surely it would have sprung. Uh, maybe, maybe he's taking us to a second trap. Maybe this is the first trap. I don't know much about traps. Neither do I. I would expect it as a hole in the ground, but. Uh, maybe we should be on our guards. I think we, if we follow him, uh, be a, have the assumption that uh, something could happen at any moment. He's brought me somewhere that I've dreamt about for weeks. I, I know. Different. But well, the answers are here. I didn't know well, where this place was. had the dream as well. Well, then we need to get answers. If we're all having the same dream, at least three of us, and he looks at Seidlitz, there must be answers somewhere here. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be out there back in Corso. I've got nothing waiting for me in there. I have no idea what you three are talking about a dream. I don't know. Maybe uh, I was just told I was going to get paid. Well, I guess we should go for answers and find your payment. And Mina will turn and head towards the other door. Octavia, Sadlitz, what are you guys doing? Octavia would take a moment to just look at the keep and kind of see the the old one in her mind and kind of huff and just, well, I guess we're going then. Sadlitz will think about his dream Shove it to the back of his mind, believing he's like, he still thinks it's nonsense. And he's just going, he's like, they promised to pay me. They said it was a job, so. And as you all stand reaffirmed in your resolution to see this through, you all take a step forward. And with that step, a scream cuts through the air. Those of you who are traveled or possibly combatants, and for sure, Octavia, you recognize this is a woman's scream. It is loud. It echoes along the empty, what you assume to be empty, walls of this keep. This is a scream of pain. It comes directly from the direction you saw the man run, followed by another scream and another scream. What do the four of you do? Octavia would immediately put out her short bow and run. Karax runs. Yeah. Towards it. Nina head straight for it as fast as he can. Say can I roll identifying and or assessing danger? Uh you can. It's gonna be a difficulty five. Fair enough. Cause all you can hear is the noise.
Yeah. Okay. So on a six, that does not beat the DC. Uh, so you hear this scream pierce the 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 air. Right. Uh, no one else seems to be running. Perhaps there is no one else. I mean, you see your your new companions sort of take off in that direction. Uh, the scream is, as I said, it is 100% a woman's scream. It is repeated several times uh, at varying lengths, um, kind of echoing off the walls. But other than that, there's no other shouts that you can hear. There's no sounds of combat that you can make out. Um, other than the hurried boot falls of your companions as they sprint after this mysterious direction. Oh boy, what have I got myself? Say, let's go grab his cavalry saber, get the one hand on it, and he'll follow them, but he'll do it a little more cautiously than the rest. Sure. He's not uh, in a full dead sprint. Sure. Uh, Korax, Mina, Octavia, you all run down this corridor. The boot falls clacking on the, the, the shattered and smashed marble floors as you make your way straight down. Um, this this keep, uh, and there's a, a large set of double doors. I think whoever's first, I think Korax and Octavia uh, at this point, as you kind of blast in through these doors, another scream kind of hits you in the face uh, as you walk through, and you see Dreshen is like panicking, and you see that there is a small woman kind of huddled over another woman on the floor who is screaming. And you all can see... The woman on the floor, in pain, screaming, is giving birth. These are contraction pains. She is grabbing onto the woman who you can only assume is a midwife as she is screaming and bearing down. And Dresden is like, I found them! I found them! Please, please, just hold on! As you kind of, the door opens. You all have weapons drawn. You see this and you can see an older woman sort of look out. Actually, she's not older. I lied entirely. She's younger. She's in her 20s. She looks out and she sees you and you can see this, like, the smallest smile across her face before another scream kind of belts out as a wave of contractions hits this woman. You guys stand in the doorway as confused as ever. What are you doing? Karax would have stopped in the doorway once he realized what was going on. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't continue running. And just look to the others. As traps go, this is the, the most confusing one I've ever encountered. Octavia would put her short bow away and gingerly step closer to the woman and can I help? Uh, you can see, like, she's trying to make out words while bearing down through these contractions. Um, and you see Dreshen kind of, like, come up to you. All pretenses are gone now, and he's still in his, his, his panic, uh, as he, like, reaches up to you and, like, grabs your hand. Thank you so much. Please, thank you so much. This is Stephanie. Sh she's the one that sent me. I, I, I couldn't tell you. If they found us, they'd kill her. We've already survived a, a, a few attacks. The, the, something's trying to kill her. I, I don't know what it is. The guards, they're mine. I, I hired them. And he, like, looks back to the group and to say, that's why I have no money. I, I only have whatever we have on us. She's going to die. And sh he points down. And you can see he believes all the things he's been saying. The midwife is terrified. She has to deliver this child because you can't just leave it there. But, like, she is, a f like, there has clearly been some kind of conversations going on. And she, like, looks up to you in, like, a, please tell me you're a midwife also so I can get the fuck out of here. That is what's communicated in that one glance. <laughs> um, are there typical birthing items around? Yeah, you can see, um, if you're familiar, you can see that there is, like, a, a, a sh she's on, like, whatever amounts for cushions. Uh, there is a bucket of cold water, a bucket of, you can see, like, light steam coming off of it. Um, there's everything that she would need in this setting per this midwife. Uh, if it was a, a planned thing and not an emergency kind of thing, you're sure there would be more. Uh, but she has the bare essentials to deliver this child. Dreshen, still holding her hand, seems to be far more concerned about the fact that they've been under attack for some reason. Um, 
She, she said you could help us. I'm. Yeah, I'm not trained for this. Um, can we go get someone else to help you? No, I, I, the, the forces of darkness are conspiring against us. I, I, I need right to, here. Every, and, everywhere. And that's that's, that's why we have the guards. I, I don't. I don't think that the the men that I hired. I don't think it's. I don't think they're going to be enough. I don't think that's your most pressing problem. If they get in, they'll kill her. Point me in the direction. I think I'd rather be facing evil than be in this room right now. Are you just looking everywhere <laughs> but <Yeah>. down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, he like he like looks to you and says, "Thank you so much. Please, please. There are guards outside. They can direct you to whatever defenses we have. I'm I'm not much for a fighter. She she found me. I'm doing the best I can." Thank you. Yeah. But before he's even finished, Mina's Mien out the door looking for the other guards he can talk yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, before Mina gets out the door, Salis puts this, need a hand with that? Uh, I, I can always use a hand unless, uh, yeah, you don't look like a, you could be of any help here. So yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Uh, Korax, you still stand shocked in the doorway, uh, as walking in on a birthing session was not exactly what you planned on running into. Uh, what are you doing? He's going to look around the room and see if there's anything else he can do other than get involved in the birthing. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a distracting moment. This is the first time you've had to kind of glance around the room. Um, something sticks out to you, something that obviously did not draw your attention immediately, but in the far corner of the room, as far away from uh, this situation uh, as can be, there is a sheet of some kind with two lumps in it. You can see red on the sheet, and you can assume these are two people who did not survive whatever the first or second or how many ever attacks that Dreshen has said they have received. Hmm. Um, he wouldn't go up to those that, you know he would turn around and leave the room mm. okay um, but he's not going to go to the battlements and fight okay so as you step out of the room the door kind of begins to close behind you and leaving Octavia in the room with this situation we'll cut to her camera Octavia, what are you doing? as the men clearly not fit for this situation have decided to leave and take up arms, you assume. What are you doing as you kind of stand over I this strange thing? Completely ignored the old man. Yeah. Went to the midwife and offered her assistance. What can I help you with? How can we help this child survive birth? Okay. Uh, yeah, she, she like looks to you and you can see like a little bit of like a, uh, you're not a midwife, right? Like that, like that, like loss of hope kind of like leave as she's like, I thought I could leave. This would have been great. Um, uh, and, and she like looks to you and she says, do you, do you, honey, do you have any experience in this? No. Okay. But... Um, do you, here, t take, take this. Uh, and she like pushes the cold water bucket over to you. And she's like, uh, apply the towels to her head. Um, keep keep her, her temperature down as best you can. Uh, just keep her calm. Um, at, at this point, all, all we can do is wait. And as soon as she says that, you hear like another, uh, like another scream kind of come out from uh, this, this Stephanie on the ground. Um, and you can see that this, this midwife uh, kind of goes back about her business. Um, she looks at you and says, I, I, I think I, uh, unless something strange happens, I, I think I have this, but... Uh, and she, she like, at the, you can hear the door, like, click close, and she, like, motions to the corner that Korax had found before. There could be more. And she, you can, you can clearly see that there are, like, two dead bodies there. Okay. Um... I guess I'll go out and help. I... Wherever you think is best. I... I'm 
not very good at fighting, but... I'm worse. Okay. Well, if you, if you think you have it, then I, I guess I can go out there. She, like, attempts a smile, and she, like, unless it's some crazy being... And she, like, looks to, to Dreshen, uh, who, you know, if he was spouting about the Divine in the tavern, you can only imagine what he was spouting in here, um, and how uncomfortable that normally makes people. Uh, and she kind of has that wry laugh that, like... <laughs> As she like prepares a cloth. Um, All right. Well, yeah. I'm gonna go outside. Okay. Uh, you head outside. At this point, uh, Mina and Sadlitz, you have made your way down the corridor. Korax, where are you going? He's gonna wander the halls of this keep, um, because obviously we've dreamt about this yeah. for weeks. Um, to see what else is here. What is here that we have seen in the dreams and. Yeah. Differences. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So you're you're wandering around. So as you wander, um, roll me. Hmm. Difficulty for intelligence uh, or intellect. Uh, if you have any kind of history or uh, arcane knowledge or religious knowledge that might help you in this situation. Would scan help at all? Uh, scan is for, um, like, scanning a weak spot on a, on a creature, I believe. Um, uh, uh, what about divine knowledge? Yeah, that's another one I can think of. That you are trained in all sense. tasks related to knowledge of godly beings. Um, that could work. That could work. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be in your skills. Um, so, uh, yeah, so roll me that. Here, I'll do this. Uh. Knowledge of godly beings. You are trained in that. I'm going to quickly on the fly edit your character sheet. Boom. There you go. So you have knowledge of godly beings. That should help you. Roll and intellect. Uh, so click on the, the dice next to that skill. Uh, difficulty is going to be four. No bonuses. That's good. Difficulty four. Okay. You guys are on fire with these rolls today. Good thing there's not, like, a siege planned. Um, so, you wander these halls. Um, it looks like, to the best of your knowledge, that these... This keep served a purpose, right? It's built into the wall of Corso. It seems like it's in a prominent place. There's a clearing around it. Like, it's like a, like a, like almost a courtyard around it. Um, but your, your best guess is that this place has been abandoned since the fall of Atlantis. So 40 plus years this place has been abandoned. So whatever it was has fallen to disrepair. You can probably guess that like several groups of gangs or runaways or hideaways had 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 taken up residence in here over the course of those 40 years, uh, defacing whatever books, relics, you know, um, useful information might have been left behind. Um, you do notice that by going room to room that um, the room where the birthing chamber was, essentially, that seems to be the most prominent room. Uh, there's only a handful of rooms in this, in this keep to begin with, but that is the largest. And several of the rooms, as you kind of walk around, you head, like, upstairs, uh, several of the rooms have balconies that lead into, like, an observatory kind of way into that room. Um... Uh, and every time you kind of go in, you see it from a different angle. Uh, and in the back of the large birthing chamber, there is a, a raised kind of platform that's there. Um, perhaps for ceremonies, perhaps for, for you're not entirely sure what it is. This is definitely not a lived-in place. No one lived here when it was used. This seems like it was a, a, a place for something. A job, perhaps, or an event, uh, perhaps. You're not entirely sure what that event could be at this moment, but... Um, that's what you're able to kind of glean as you wander around the keep. Uh, but as you are wandering, we cut back to uh, Nina, Octavia, and Sadlitz as you all make your way outside. Uh, again, varying levels of confusion as to what the fuck is happening. And you are uh, two, two uh, sorry, three guards uh, are, are coming towards the main door as you kind of exit out 
Um, they seemed to have been going inside, but they stop when they see you. Is everything okay? Uh, we were told that um, this place needed defending, and we're we're here to offer our our weapons. Oh, oh God! Are you? Can you fight? Uh, I I can. Great, I've been great. A hunter for years. I can oh, fight. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, and you like look at them, and they are clearly like street thugs. The most fighting they've been is is a scrap on the street. Um, over turf, maybe, or a, a, a steel, right? Uh, a job. Um, they're not trained combatants. They're fist fighters. They have, you know, a, a short sword, a dagger, um, a, a, a plank that is a club, right? They are not fit for this. Um, you know, we, we have um, uh, we have two. We have two on the uh, um, uh, the gate. The gate. We have two on the gate. Um, uh, there's one. There's one here uh, in the upper floors. Um, uh, 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 in, in the roof, uh, making sure that no one gets close. Um, uh, who the hell else? Um, oh, he's on well, he's on well duty. And, and the, this person points to, uh, the other young man in the group. Um, uh, what, what's what's attacking us? Uh, this is going to sound insane. Um, well, people, uh, sometimes, um, and then, like a, like a weird shadow, people that came out of like nowhere. Oh, just dressed in the in black clothing, or no, they like they got up. A shadow got up. I don't know, man. Like it got up. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you. <laughs> where, do you. Where do you want us to go? Uh, wherever. Just spread out. Whatever you think is best. Um, and, and you can kind of see, again, the courtyard is, there's that there's that lower wall than the high wall. I think it's like uh, like 10 feet high, right, the wall. Um, there's a small, rickety staircase up to the parapets. Uh, no one is along that. You can see from here. There's a well. There's a couple of outhouses. Not outhouses. Outbuildings. Um uh, and you see, there's the two guards that are that are on the others that are on the portcullis that let you in. Um, these three people, and you can see like two other people kind of milling about. Um, so there's like a total of seven people to defend this keep from whatever the fuck is going on. People and shadow people. That doesn't make any sense. I think go up into the parapets and just kind of mill about. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you split off. Do you say anything to anyone as you kind of just roll out? No. Okay. Uh, so, Mina, as you're looking around, say this is you as well, you just see Octavia, like, still short bow in hand, just walks off. And you can see she's moving directly in the direction of the staircase up to the top of the wall. Um, what are the two of Looks you like doing? she's made up her mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I guess defend wherever. Uh, and me and will just walk into the center of the courtyard and just sit down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, say, let's. What are you up to? He's thinking about it, and it's like, well, he, any options open. He's got both a crossbow and a, a long sword. Yep. So either option's open to him, but. It feels like Mina would be a better person to kill time with than Octavia, so he'll hang out in the courtyard. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, you hang out in the courtyard. Um, Octavia, you head up towards um, the parapets, right? Uh, and you're once you get up there, you can kind of walk around the entire thing. Um, you see the City of Night stretch out before you. There is... No movement. You can see that there are two guards kind of hanging out at the gate. Um, you can see that there's um, Mina and um, uh, Salitz are just kind of chilling in the middle of the courtyard. Uh, there are several outbuildings. You can see that there's one guy who's like every once in a while looks down into the well and then like looks back up and just kind of, kind of turns around and leans on the well. And then you see a few minutes go by and he like looks back in the well again and then like leans back on the well. Uh, what are you doing out there? on the parapets, on this wall. 
just keeping a clock for the uh, group, just trying to make sure that if there's something coming that I can see it first. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, you're going to get an asset on identifying any, any incoming threats. Um, so you begin to take up an, an, a, a lookout position. Um, Sadlitz and um, uh, Mina, what are you guys doing as you kind of sit in the center of the courtyard? Mina will definitely be trying to draw Sadlitz into conversation. Um, he'll be saying, uh, so Uncle, what what do you think of um, this situation? I'm not your uncle. For one, I actually do have a niece and a nephew, so I'm de you're definitely not one of um, them. Okay. And um, about this situation? Growing up, my, growing up, my family, we referred to uh, any uh, elderly um, uh, friends as uncle or auntie. Sorry. How old do you think I am, friend? Uh, I think you're about... I think my dad's about 40, maybe, or about the same age. Uh, you're pretty dang close, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but appraisal of this situation. Shadow people, divine, you you lot have dreams? Yeah, I, I, I dreamt about this cape, but it didn't look this crappy, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, it all seems... I don't know. There's, there's something going on, but... I'm, I've never experienced this before. <sighs> as long as I get my money in the end, I don't care what goes on. Yeah, I, to be honest, I th think you're going to be lucky to get anything out of this. Other than yeah, the, I'm the, so the, feeling, the good feeling of helping people out in need. <laughs> what good does that do in this world? Uh, we need more of it, otherwise it's just going to descend into chaos. We go to Samara. It's nicer there. I, I'm from Samara. Uh, oh, well, my my parents are. I've been there a few times. Uh, it's um, it's much better. It's especially outside of the shadow of Nod. I hate this place. I hate not seeing the sun. You and me both. <sighs> what thought is okay. All right, shadow people. Hmm. How do you even fight shadow people? Light. I was actually about to say that, Mike. <laughs> Probably <laughs> light. flashlights. Oh, lights cause more shadows. Just so. Yep. <laughs> Big light. Uh, uh, okay. Yep. So as you guys continue with your small talk here in the courtyard, which remains relatively quiet. The camera kind of pans up the keep. Uh, you see that one of the other thugs is kind of like walking around. You see him through shattered windows as the camera kind of pans in uh, towards Korax. Korax, you have been milling about here. You've passed by uh, the birthing chamber several times. You've passed by windows outside. You now see that Octavia um, red hair standing out in the darkness. Um, is walking the parapets. You see that Sadlitz and um, Mina are in the courtyard, just sort of having a casual conversation as guards kind of mill about. What are you doing as your newfound allies uh, prepare themselves for what is to come? Um, Korax would eventually, after having seen the rooms and that there's nothing much to really find here, mm -hmm. um, would eventually make his way up to the parapets and okay. Octavia would just find him randomly standing next to her. Okay. And walk along the parapets with her. I just like it. I like dead it. Dead silence. I like it. So I feel like uh, in, the, in the weirdest way possible, uh, <laughs> Octavia, you're like walking one of your like normal, like your, your pathway and you go to turn around and then there, no less than three to five feet away from you is... Uh, is Corex. 
just shake my head and walk away from him. God, this is a, the rudest party ever. Uh, yeah, you, you yeah. see that, Corax. Does that phase you in any way? No. Okay. He doesn't get it. He just it seems that she shook his shook her head because he was there and that she's continuing her round. Okay. Okay. Um so you guys uh continue this entire thing. I need Octavia and Corex to make me an intelligence check. Uh difficulty is going to be three. Um Octavia and uh uh Wow, my brain just shut off. Corex, you guys get an asset on this because you are on the parapets. Uh, the rest of you can also make the same thing. Intelligence, uh, three. So by asset, do you mean bonus or effort? Uh, bonus is fine. Okay. Oh, that, that is a bad. failure, a failure, a failure. And one more for uh, for Sadlitz. A success, a natural 20. Okay, cool. So natural 20s are different in this game, just like natural 1s are. Uh, actually, natural 18 through 20 are usually beneficial. Um, so there's no extra damage here. Uh, however, you do get a major effect on your success. Whatever it is, perhaps it is the untrained eye of Octavia and Corax uh, and uh, Mina as well. And perhaps it is the trained ears and eyes of Sadlitz. But Sadlitz, despite being in conversation, despite being at a lowered sense of awareness in general because of where you are, you, your ear perks up. It's like you're back in the woods when everything is dead silent and you can hear the snap of a twig and you know your prey is close and you just have to wait that breathless second until it comes into view. Everything goes dead quiet. The din of the city kind of washes out. The, the, the talking of uh, Mina kind of like, and it kind of goes away and you hear like a pebble kick in the distance. And it's just enough to draw your eyes towards the gate. And perhaps Octavia and Corex are looking in a different direction. Remember, they just turned around. They're just on the other side. But you see, out of the corner of your eye, something glint in the darkness out on the other side of the portcullis. And as soon as you kind of train your, your hunter's eye on it, you see it growing closer and closer. And as the realization of what it is kind of washes over you, you see about 20 feet away from the gate, three men are running with a battering ram at this portcullis. For whatever reason, people are trying to get inside rather aggressively. Turns out Dreshen might not have been as crazy as he thought. You see them charging in and you can act before anyone else can. What do you want to do? I yell, incoming at the gate. I just yell, incoming for the gate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see and them, you see them see this thing and they get out of the way uh, because they have, they don't have, a, you can see as they begin to like scramble and pull out like a sword and a dagger uh, as this thing is charging towards the gate. And I'm pulling out my crossbow and I'm getting it ready for the okay. fight ahead. Okay. Uh, you all hear the call go out. Incoming at the gate. It draws your attention, Corax, Octavia, uh, Mina. This is this is this is a combat. This is something is happening here. There are and you can all look, and especially uh, Corax and Octavia. You see do, 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 these three men holding what looks to be like a tree, like it's like a, a severed big wooden. As they're just going and charging at the door. Um, what I need is for everyone to roll me initiative. The difficulty is level two. Level two initiative. We got a success. 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 Do I roll my danger sense with that, or is that just a special thing? Uh, what is danger sense? Uh, I can use a speed point to reduce my initiative by one. If you'd like to, if you'd like to increase ah, that. Yeah. It's just a two. Okay. So then just roll a normal initiative. 
Can I do find the flaw? Yes, what does that do? If an opponent has a straightforward weakness, takes extra damage from fire, uh, can't see out of their left eye and so on, the GM will tell you. Okay, what does that cost? Does that has, does it have a cost to it next to it? Zero. Zero, hot shit. Okay. Um, find the flaw. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Do these guys have any kind of, of bullshit uh, about them? Um, let's see. These guys are... I don't think, I don't think they have one. Um, yeah, I think you like look at these guys and there's no... They're, they look, what you can tell with your find the flaw as you try to look at these... They just look like regular people. Okay. So, hit them with the pointy end. Uh, that's their weakness. Their insides on the outside is their biggest weakness. Um, that's what that's what gets them. Uh, okay, so all of you have rolled uh, a success. And what's what I love about this system? You succeeded on the roll. That means you all go first. Um, so, in whatever order you decide, go. Uh, whoever wants to jump in first, you're more than welcome to jump in first. Octavia is going to take a shot with her short bow. Yeah. Roll me a uh, an attack. Uh, this is a ranged attack, so this would be speed. Uh, or you should have a button that says, like, your bow, I think, uh, under attacks. No, we didn't make one for you. Okay, so speed. Uh, speed, um, uh, difficulty two. Everything for these guys is going to be a difficulty two. And then with that find the flaw, does it get the uh, advantage? Uh, there is no flaw for these guys. Okay. Yeah. Success. Uh, okay, so you you loose an arrow, kind of spirals down, and you see it sink into the arm of the lead guy, and you see him like let go of one hand, and you can see that whatever this battering ram is kind of drop a little bit. Like, yeah, fuck. Um, as it drives into him, dealing, uh, I believe. Uh, I believe it's a medium weapon. Uh, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a light weapon. So two points of damage as it pegs into him. Uh, who would like to go next? Hadlitz will look for a position of cover in his immediate vicinity, get behind it, and then let fly an, a bolt from his crossbow. Yeah, the closest point of... Uh, you have two options. There is, to your left, there is the well. You can kind of get low behind uh, or to your right, there is a, a small outbuilding that you can kind of lean up against the wall and lean around. I'm going to go for the outbuilding. Okay. So you charge up into the left, leaving uh, Mina here in the center of the courtyard. You slam into the wall. You kind of spin that crossbow around and roll me a uh, ranged crossbow attack. Uh, DC uh, is going to be uh, two. Hot shit. That's another 20. Uh, okay, cool. So here's where we have a fun option. Because we're in combat, you can have a major effect, which we can discuss what that could be, or you can just straight up deal four extra damage to this guy. I want to know what the major effects are first. Uh, whatever you kind of want. What are you thinking as a major effect? What do you think is something that you'd like to do on a natural 20? I would like to hit the guy who's like... Put the one of the, like lead guys who's yeah. pushing the battering ram, and I want to make him drop it, basically. Okay, yeah. So again, you you this this bolt looses, it spirals through, it goes through the portcullis, right, and hits that same guy that Octavia just shot, and you hit him in the other arm, the other shoulder. And poof, you can see his shoulder kind of, and you get, ah, god damn it, and he falls to the side, and you you hear the 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 battering ram kind of crash. As the other two are trying, fuck, get up, get to the other side, get to the other side, go, go, go. And you can see them scrambling to try to pick this thing up. Um, Mina and, or, or Mina and um, uh, Corax, what are you two doing? Mia will just charge for the gate and he'll scream out, um, lift the gate. And as soon as it's far enough on the ground, he will go into a slide using his shield underneath him. Yeah. Slide under the gate. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, you do that. You close the distance. I'm not gonna have you roll for that. That's just cool. Uh, you see the other two, the the other two like thugs that were like guarding the door, begin to like crank it up. Like, okay, sure, whatever, man. Um, as you come running in, as they're like, oh shit, and they start cranking it more. And then we all hear that like, 
that slide of your shield, your metal shield, on the 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 stonework uh, ground as you skid and slide underneath the gate, kind of popping up. Uh, do you have your spear out when you when you pop up? Uh, yeah, you pop up with it in hand. Perfect. Yeah, so you kind of pop up, shield back on the arm, spear out at the ready, um, and then you hear the as the gate closes back down behind you. Um, that will be your action because that was badass as fuck. Um, Corax, what are you doing from the parapets? Corax would be watching from the parapets. Mm -hmm. um, he wouldn't do much more than that. Okay. Uh, he would be basically prepping to run back um, down to let the people know inside the chamber should the gate get breached. But if that doesn't happen, he's just going to stand. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, you do that. You kind of stand there. You you ready, ready for action. Um, the uh, the guard, or oh, sorry, the the uh, the street tough who has now been shot in both arms uh, is bleeding as an action. Uh, and the other two see you, uh, uh, Mina, and they run towards you. I need you to make me um, a might defense uh, difficulty two. I need you to make me two of those rolls. While he rolls up, Mike, how high are the parapets? Uh, I think they're 10 feet from the ground. 10 feet, cool. You Safe could to jump down. Basically. You could you could jump down. Um, I would have you, as like a bonus kind of thing, I'd have you roll me a, a, a speed just to see if you roll a nat 1 and eat shit. Um, okay, so a 19, great. And one more of those for me. Okay, so you succeed on both of these. These two guys drop the battering ram and they charge at you. Uh, you easily deflect one of them with your shield. Um, and the other one, you have a minor effect. So on an 18 and a 19, you have a minor effect, um, not unlike the major effect, just slightly smaller. What do you think you would like as a minor effect um, to block this incoming damage? I think as a minor effect, he would um, try to position himself so that the attacker actually has his back to the gate and to the people firing through yeah. the portcullis. Yeah, cool. So the first guy comes up with, like, a dagger, and you, like, ting right off the button shield, right? And the other guy has, like, a, 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 like a sword, and with your spear, you can kind of, like, lock it, and you kind of engage him so that it spins him so that his back is facing uh, the rest of your allies. Uh, and as that happens, the uh, combat initiative shifts. Uh, it is all of your turns. Who would like to act first? Carax would jump down, yeah. seeing Mina getting into combat outside. Yeah. Um, and basically make his way towards the gate, but not go through it. Okay, roll me, uh, just for safety's sake, roll me a uh, a speed check. Uh, difficulty is going to be uh, three for this one. Get ready for the net one. I know, right? Don't jinx yourself. <laughs> I actually succeeded at Perfect, time. yeah. First you one. yeah, you gracefully land. You look <clears throat> you drop right down and you're able to you're actually able to get to uh to Mina if you'd like to. He would stand inside the gate, because mm -hmm. you can see them through the gate. Yeah. Um, and he would be ready at that point. Okay, yeah. And so you you are at the gate, um kind of off to the side, like off to the left hand side, because you can see that um Sadlitz was firing through it. The other two kind of guards, they're both at either side of the portcullis. You can see that they have like a shaky hand on a on a blade um, as they are preparing for what's about to happen uh, as you ready yourself. Um, the rest of you guys, what do you guys want to do? What, who wants to go next? Avia's going to loose another arrow. Okay. Uh, fire me a, uh, a difficulty two. So a speed roll uh, difficulty two. So you pull the, the arrow back, it goes loose, and because there's combat all over the place, it's, it's you know, you, you, you see out of the corner of your eye that Korax jumps down at like a crazy person, and the arrow kind of, you hear it like skitter off the ground as it hits those stones and clatters away. Sadlitz, uh, Mina, what are you guys doing? Sadlitz is going to load another bolt. Yeah. And he's going to target the guy that, Mina specifically put between him and the gate, the guy yeah. that's got the back to the gate. I'm going to target him. Yeah, I like that. Give yourself uh, a, a plus one bonus for that. And that's going to be a difficulty mm -hmm. two as well. Uh, 
Okay, you succeed. You you launch another bolt. It spins past uh, Corex. You see this happen as you like get into position. The bolt sails through the portcullis and drives right into like the back left shoulder of this guy. You see him lurch forward, um, sort of like lu almost lunging towards uh, towards uh, towards Mina. And Mina, as this guy lurches towards you, what are you doing? I think you're muted. He's muted. You're muted. No, you are all muted. Oh, my muted. bad. <laughs> Mina will take it, try to take advantage of the uh, guy he set up to be shot. And yeah. And just try to stab him with uh, Chanel. Yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, roll me a, uh, a might uh, or, or an attack roll. Uh, Difficulty is going to be two and give yourself a bonus asset for this. Success. God, shit, I forgot you have a fucking heavy weapon. Um, okay, cool. Describe to me how you fucking end this guy. Yeah, so Sadalus has shot him, so obviously he, he stumbles forward. Yeah. Um, and whilst trying to keep his shield defending behind him, um, he'll uh, almost spin Chanel in his hand and just thrust it forward, almost aiming for the spot where the crossbow came through. Yeah. To just completely skewer him. Yeah, and so I think, uh, Korax, you see, because you're the closest person, right? You see this, like, spin action and, like, a very deft pointed lunge with this spear. And then you see, like, the first, like, inch and a half of spear tip out the back of this guy's shoulder blade. Which, you know, bones are, it's, that's, it went through a bone. That went through a bone. That straight up went through a bone. Um, and you see him, like, retract this spear as this guy slumps to the ground. A growing pool uh, grows around him uh, as, as Mina gets ready for the other guy. Um, who is, in fact, attacking him. So, Mina, please roll me a might defense difficulty two on this guy. You succeed. This guy, without fail, you whip around as he's coming down with that dagger. And again, you just kind of like knock it with the haft of your uh, of your spear. You kind of stagger him backwards a little bit. Um, you see that the guy who is now double arrowed uh, up on a Tuesday afternoon, um, as he's laying down next to the battering ram, he kind of like limply reaches up a hand to his face. And you see him put fingers in his mouth and he whistles the sharp, shrill whistle as though calling out to some more allies. That's all you see before, I can only assume, Octavia tries to loose another arrow into this guy's face. So go ahead and roll me that speed attack difficulty two. That'll do it. That'll do it. So you fire this arrow, and as soon as you see the fingers go, and you hear that that shrill, it, and you see his arm drop to the side as that arrow hit him right in the neck. The whistle went out, not very long, but it went out, and you see him like leaning back as he slowly descends to the ground, the pool growing around him. There is only one combatant left. Korax, Sadlitz, Mina, what are you all doing? Korax turns to the guys at the gate. You're going to need to lift this thing. Oh, okay, okay. And you see them both grab on to the gear. He's, he holds his hand up. And says, I'll let you know when. Okay. He just waits. Okay. Uh, Mina and uh, Sadlitz. So Mina, um, you know, thinking one good turn deserves another, he'll use control the field to position the guy again with his back to the port course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, does that cost anything? How does that work? Um, so it costs one might, but I use my edge. And, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I do deal one less damage, but even on a miss, I position him uh, where I want him to be. Okay, then you roll me that, uh, roll me that, uh, that, that difficulty two might defense, or, 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 sorry, might attack. 
yeah, you slam into this guy, dealing a bunch of damage as you spin him towards uh, his his backside, towards the the portcullis, opening up a shot uh, for Sadlitz. Sadlitz, you you know what to do here. I let it fly. Well, you get a plus one what plus one Nina bonus. Wants me to do. Yep. See what happens here. Unfortunately, perhaps mm. you were still cranking that shaft back, right, to get that bolt locked into place, and Mina was just too quick, and he, the guy gets in position, you're like, oh, no, and you fire it, but it, like, ding. Yeah, in fact, it actually kind of spirals through, uh, and Korax, you actually hear this ding as it, like, hits the bar of the portcullis and kind of scatters off into uh, the darkness beyond. Uh, unfortunately, that dead shot did not succeed this time around. Uh, as this guy realizes what you're trying to do, having seen the bolt shaft sticking out of his uh, dead friend now, he tries to get the best of you and tries to reposition himself a little bit. And he kind of side, he kind of gets you guys to be like sideways to the gate and he's going to try to stab you again. Uh, so roll me a difficulty two, might defense, uh, Mina. Okay, I'm just going to assume your minor effect here. He goes to stab you, and again, you just sort of scoop him right back into position uh, where where you wanted him to be, the, the position he moved out of, right? Uh, you get him back exactly where you wanted him to be. Um, that being said, Sadlitz, it is the player's turns right now. You have another shot lined up for you. Do you want to try to take the shot? You are muted. I'm going to yell to me to finish him off already. Okay. I'm still loading. <laughs> old men are getting old. Um, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll take another shot. I'll um, try to finish him off with a, a solid thrust. Yeah. Okay, describe. Yeah, so seeing that um, Sadlitz won't take the shot, Mina's kind of resigns himself to the, the fact. So he faints as if he's going to allow the guy to get past him, assuming that the guy will take any opportunity to get his back from the gate, and then quickly just thrust back through with his with Chanel to just impale him again. Okay. So yeah, you right through this guy. And again, you can see the uh, Corax, you can see that, that tip of the blade sort of pierce through this guy's midsection. Um, and that wet, that wet sickening as it sticks out, as this guy crumples to the ground. So I have bad news, everybody. It's almost time to wrap up this session, but worse than that, the first corruption bar was that whistle. The second corruption bar is the fact that Octavia, Corex, Mina, Sadlitz, you see stepping out of the shadows. Corex, something sticks out to you, specifically. The shadows kind of... It's less that this person steps out of the shadows and more that the shadows open up for this person as he steps forward. And you see him one-handing a large tome, the other hand above it, moving fingers mechanically. The pages flick back and forth in a sickening purple glow flits between the pages. You can actually see the words glowing. Um, Mina, you can feel this presence behind you and it kind of causes you to turn bloody spear in hand as you can hear the low guttural mumblings of whatever the hell this guy is doing. Sadlitz, inside the keep from where you are, you have a first-hand view from the distance. The shadows on the interior of the wall begin to remove themselves from the wall, as if wallpaper peeling from the wall itself. The shadows peel forward, and you see these strange jerking humanoid forms lurch out from the wall 
as you're adjusting to this, Octavia, you hear a scream, a very short scream, perhaps enough to cause you to look over, and you see that one guard who kept looking in the well. <laughs> Gone. You see his feet tip over the side, and his scream is cut short. What pulled him in, you have no idea. But now all of you can hear that low, guttural chanting. And from the book, a sickening red glow begins to spread out from this man who is approaching the keep. And that is where episode one of The Rise will end. Welcome to hell! This is... <laughs> oh boy, Shadow Mages. Yeah, buddy! That's what's happening! That's what's happening. Uh, fan freaking tastic. This was episode one of The Rise. This is our uh, Cypher System uh, Gods of the Fall campaign here for our patrons. Um, that's it. That's all I got to say. Uh, if you guys like what we do here, Patreon is the best way to support us. Join us in the conversation, in the Discord, talk about this game, talk about our other games, all that other shit. Uh, I'm going to shut up and let these guys talk. Uh, so, we'll start the top on my screen. Uh, Necro, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? I am Chris, aka Necro, uh, on the internet. I am nowhere at the moment. Uh, back into streaming in probably a month's time. Um, other than that, you can find me in the Discord, um, which is linked in chat probably. Perfect. Uh, Snow, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Uh, I'm Snowdogs on all the socials. Um, you probably can't find me anywhere other than here. Um, and... Uh, lurking in Discord. Perfect. Rose, same questions. Who are you? Where can we find you? And what are you up to? I'm Rose. I uh, I do TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, all of the things. All of them will be Mrs. Make You Mad. And come hang out in the Discord. I'm mostly there. Yeah. Yeah. Do the do the do the freaking thing. Go follow her on uh, fucking uh, the TikToks. There's some there's some there's some silly ass shit. There's some good stuff on there. Uh, go check it out. Uh, with that, last but definitely not least, DE, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? I am DE173, aka Matt. Uh, you find me on Mike's Discord a lot. Uh, I'm just kind of in the Patreon chat mostly, but I'll step into the graveyard every once in a while. And you'll find me posting memes in the pics section. <laughs> Perfect. Um, as with our normal streamed campaigns, as with our Patreon one-shots, there's an after show. Not for you, unless you're a patron. So if you want to get the after show, link for the Patreon down below. We're going to get out of here. We're going to go do our after show. We're going to discuss this game. And if you are joining us late, it's going to be up on YouTube in two days. So check us out. So with that being said, from all of us to you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.